So, so hold on. Let me get this straight. The Bucks have suck. The Young Bucks. The heroes to so many of you. After all of these years, can't stand the heat in the kitchen that they helped kind of create it. And now I've decided they're going to leave Twitter. <laughs> pot, meet pussy. Pussy, meet pot. <laughs> Matt and Nick Jackson, the young bucks, have left Twitter. Because they need to get away from it. I can't wait to see some of the justifications, defenses, and excuses that people are going to come up with in the comments. Oh, God, are those going to be rich? <laughs> Help me understand this for a second. Because some people, Klondike Bill and others, post a video, among other things, Talking about the good, clean, stiff, non-connecting shots thrown in that Dark Order segment at the end of the show. Now, now, after all this time, <laughs> because people are pointing out how obviously phony that look and how shitty that look to see on a national primetime wrestling show. These two clowns, these two executive vice presidents get butt hurt and in their feelings and they decide, they don't want to do Twitter anymore. I can't deal with the negativity. I can't wait for the people to talk about, well, this is a work. They're just selling. Hey, when the hell did the young bucks know how to work anything? The next time they work, damn it, it's pretty much going to be the first time they actually work. So don't come at me with that crap. Because they couldn't stand the negativity on Twitter. <laughs> how are these guys even talking about? If this is true, and if this is the case, Matt and Nick have gotten so much ball washing on Twitter over the years that all of a sudden now they get a little bit of heat, a little bit of negativity, and they can't stand it. Man, if that isn't the crystallization, the embodiment, the personification of the wussification of professional wrestling, I don't know what the hell is. These two guys that have made their careers, their livelihoods in large part, dependent upon the hardcore internet audience... These same guys that at times throughout their wrestling careers and their internet social media lives have taken to bashing people and trolling people and talking crap about other companies. Now, now, all of a sudden, when the criticism is pointed in your general direction, you can't handle it and you wuss out. You put your tail between your legs and you exit stage left. Because of course you do. It's all wrestling is full of today. There's a bunch of mamby-pamby bullies. When they want to talk about fans being keyboard warriors, these wrestlers are the epitome of keyboard warriors. They can sit there and lob all types of insults and all types of jabs at you all day long. But as soon as those chickens come home to roost, all of a sudden we got problems and we got issues. I got depression and I got this and my feelings are hurt and I'm sad and there's too much negativity and I help feed into it all these years. You know, this comes back to the whole thing of maybe Twitter isn't the place. If you can't handle it, then don't be on it. But how much heat can the Young Bucks actually get? Because so much of the interaction that they have on social media involves people kissing their ass, licking their nuts, and just generally ball washing them all the time. You got so many of these internet wrestling websites and these dirt sheet guys, these podcasters sniffing their cracks, that they wouldn't be able to tell them a badly obvious bad thing about the product if it jumped up and bit them in the ass. And that's part of the problem. Nobody is perfect. And if you can't take feedback, if you can't handle criticism, then you know what? It's the wrong business for you. And how do you expect to truly ever be successful in any form or walk of life? I mean, it'd be one thing if you were talking about fans who were showing up at Matt and Nick's house and they were threatening families and trying to shoot at them and stuff. Then obviously that has gone way, way too far. We have crossed barriers 
And at that point in time, I couldn't blame them. But empty threats or talking trash because this was really crappy or other people in general talking about how your ratings and viewership numbers continue to decline because your product stays because you don't know what the hell you're doing. It's not a reason to leave. And these are the guys that a lot of you have put your faith in. These a-holes right here. How the hell can you now sit there and look at yourselves and take yourself seriously having confidence in these guys who have never really been responsible, mind you, for booking weekly wrestling television to begin with that now are tucking tail and running away from a little internet criticism? How could you sit there and have faith in these guys? What have they done to earn it? The answer is nothing. Stop being dumb, naive, and delusional about it. And if they come back in a few weeks and try to play the whole card, oh, well, we're back and we were just working. Yeah, we're working shit. Like, imagine that. Like, they got so torn up about whatever alleged negativity they were seeing. Like, even Papa Buck was on there talking about it's gone too far. A, you reap what you sow, a-holes. B, B, and here's a big B, stop being bitches about a little bit of criticism. I get that shit all the time on social media without nearly the amount of ball washing to the level, depth, and degree that the Bucks do. And you don't see me leaving and crying about it. Because you know what? It comes with the turf. If you can't stand the heat, get the hell out of the kitchen. And most certainly of all, don't be sitting there from a distance and trying to throw burning matches on the freaking flame trying to ignite the blaze. Maybe, just maybe, they should stop talking so much trash about other companies and worrying so much about what other people do and focus on themselves. Because obviously the thoughts and opinions of anybody else that isn't overwhelmingly praising and positive clearly bothers them. So the next time it comes to talking about this person in New Japan or this person in WWE, I've got a bit of advice for Matt and Nick, the Young Bucks. How about you? Just shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. That's what you can do. How pathetic is this? Like these guys made a lot of money off of trolling people. And now, when people come back at them, it's a problem. How convenient is that? They get no sympathy. They deserve no sympathy. And all of you ball washers out there that are going to sit there and defend them, the kingdom fucking come. Get over it. Get a clue. Get a life. Because I guarantee you, guarantee you, that so many of these wrestlers and wrestling people that you hold up on pedestals wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. All that ball washing and kissing up and sucking up to them you do, what the hell does that get you? They bail on you the first freaking chance they get any type of criticism whatsoever. All that energy you devoted to them. All that time and emotional investment you put into them. All that money you probably took your fat ass down to Hot Topic to buy them shirts. And this is how they repay you. If they're so easy to quit Twitter over so little, imagine how easily they might quit AEW over even less. Like these are the people that you are entrusting with the future of all elite wrestling in 2020. How the hell can you possibly feel good about this? And then you got people sitting there attacking Klondike Bill on Twitter and others. Talking about their negativity and their impacting credibility. Let me, let me put it this way. Botches happen in every wrestling company. The wrestling business in and of itself already doesn't have a lot of credibility and has done everything to make it that way. That's not the fault of the fans. It's a fault of everybody else up to and especially not including the fans in the internet. Think of it like this. If one video going viral, if one video getting a lot of buzz, is enough, is enough to actually hurt in any way the credibility of your product, then your product didn't have any credibility to begin with. My Jesus. And then, you surely want people to come on here and talk about, oh, you're so glad that AEW, da, 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 da. Yet I don't watch NXT, I watch AEW every week, and I review their shows. 
Oh, yeah, because he just loves WWE and ball washes them. Do I, a-holes? Do I? If anything, if anything, shame on me for not being more aggressively hard and negative towards Cody, the Bucks of Suck, and all these ass clowns involved with AEW when they freaking deserve it! AEW doesn't even give it a fraction of the heat I've given the freaking WWE worst wrestling ever over the damn years. So you can miss me with that crap too. Like for so many of these wrestlers, you know, if you can't stand the negativity, here's a bit of advice. Don't read it. You don't have to read it. You don't have to click on your notifications and see the responses. You don't have to look at your tweets and see who replied with what. You don't have to. And frankly, it really isn't that hard to ignore it. It really isn't. But again, it just speaks to how overly sensitive and completely and totally insecure so many of these wrestling people are that they do actually look at these comments and replies and their threads and so forth, their mentions and notifications, because since they can't be happy with what they're doing themselves and they need that constant validation of others because they lack the self-esteem to be happy with what they're doing, they do log in, they do go to the notifications and the mentions and the replies, and when they see it, if they see anything even remotely negative, it just destroys them. And think about that. And let's be real here. When you're talking about the bucks of suck, they're going to get way more positive internet love than inter negative internet love. Whereas opposed to other guys over there like Cena, Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, I, those guys don't quit Twitter. Seth Rollins does because Seth Rollins is a bitch and a puss, and just like so many of these other guys. Part of being a big star that you allege yourselves to be is being able to take the bad along with the good and embrace and welcome them both equally. And if anything, use the bad as the opportunities to learn, grow, get better, and improve. But instead, nah. I can't handle the negativity that I actually rarely see, so I'm just going to quit. Typical. Typical. Maybe they'll go into Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer's arms and they'll cry their problems away. Maybe Brian and Dave can reaffirm them that it's okay. It's okay. Maybe you can name a finisher after Brian Alvarez too. That will really make you awesome. I don't know what the hell it is. But for these wrestling people, grow some thicker skin. Because if Twitter is too much for you to handle, how are you ever going to be successful in your chosen line of work over a long period of time? Now, the Bucks have done it for a period of time because they isolated themselves in a pocket that's going to be mostly positive towards them. But if you want to be bigger, you want to be better, and you want to make more of yourself and make more money in that line of work, eventually you have to go outside of the comfort zone. And it's outside of that comfort zone where people ultimately determine their true levels of success and or failure. And now that the Bucks have gotten outside of their comfort zone, it is absolutely of zero surprise to me to see them kind of folding and withering under the pressure.